isang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Good afternoon to our fellow Mookers. It's Friday once again. And I hope that you are having a relaxing afternoon. Yeah. Please grab uh, your snacks or your coffee. And then please send in your greetings. Uh, type your name and your school in our chat box. So yeah, isang magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. It's already 4 o'clock. Yeah, let us start. So today is May 21, 2021. Yeah, can you believe po, we are almost halfway through the year already? You know, time indeed uh, flies. <laughs> yeah. So we have hurdled every challenge, even from last year. And I know that we will continue to overcome whatever we face for the rest of this year. Yeah, let us continue to be hopeful that brighter days are ahead of us. So please, pakitawag na po ang ating mga kasamahan. You can log in dito po sa Zoom or in YouTube Live. Um, again po, I am Pamela Rodelas, uh, CEPS for the Human Resource Development Section. And today, I am so thankful that we have with us another beautiful and brilliant principal. Yan, puro magaganda at mahuhusay po ang ating nakakasama for our meetups. So this time, uh, from Real Elementary School, let us all welcome uh, Ma'am Rowena Campbell. Ma'am Wang, welcome Hello. Hello, Miss Pam. It's welcome nice to see your board. smile once again. Yes, <laughs> and good afternoon, fellow lifelong learners, especially to the top management who are behind this um, Massive online open course and camp headed by our dignified schools division superintendent, Madam Susan D. L. Oribiana, and of course, our focal person who initiated this worthwhile activity, no other than our very own ASDS, Sir J.P.E. Lopo. Miss Pam, how's everybody there in FB Live? How many viewers do we Ayan. have now? Sige, ma'am. Right now, po, um, we have 127 and counting po in YouTube. Um, ayun, again, let us all um, invite and tawagin po natin ang ating mga co-teachers, ang ating mga kasamahan to join na po ang ating Zoom map. Yan, mag-shout out tayo, ma'am Wen. Okay, so far we have 57 participants here in Zoom meeting. Shout out, kanina unang-una kong nag -nag pop up dito sa greetings ay ang, ang maganda at mahusay na punong guro ng Kalamba Elementary School. Hello there, Ma'am Joyce. Nakita kita kanina yung pinakaunang nag-greet. Good afternoon din po. Watching from Punta Integrated School ay nawala na. <laughs> Nagalang. Yan. Si Ma'am Arlene Garcia, nakita ko rin. Um, Good afternoon, Ma'am Mue. Si Ma'am Kayet. Ma'am Kayet, nakita ko siya. It's nice to see new faces and of course familiar faces. Hi! Shout out to Miss Leia Pamplona. From Maunong Elementary School. How about there in uh, FB Live, Miss Pam? Ayan, ma'am. So, I, I want to acknowledge din po, uh, hello po sa ating mga chief, at sa ating dalawang chiefs, Ma'am Dolor, De Castro, and Ma'am Marisa De Duma. Good afternoon po to our SDSS, PSDSS, um, to all our school heads. Yan, magandang hapon po. Marami rin pong nag-greet dito sa YouTube live, ma'am. From, ayan, si Ma'am Nori Redondo, hello po. Watching from Barol Elementary hello. School. Ma'am Judith Karaya, hello. Good afternoon po. From uh, Lawa uh, Integrated School. Ayan, and then, ayan, magbabasa lang ako randomly. Ma'am Ligaya Erasca, hello po. Good afternoon. Excited for our MOOC Meet of Three. Watching from Kalamba. Yeah. Okay. So, ayan. Naandito rin. Nakita ko rin si Ma'am Eneline Badillo. Ayan. Uh, si Ma'am Joy Gonzalez. 
Ito rin siya. Si Ma'am Susan Alcantara. Hello there, Ma'am Susan Alcantara of Punta Integrated. Nice to see you here in Zoom. I Ma hope Mer, everyone is enjoying. Yes po. Acknowledge din po natin. Ayan, nakita ko po ang nandito po ang ating SDS. Hello, good afternoon po. Thank you for being with us po, Ma'am Susan. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Hello, Ma'am. Ayan si Ma'am. It's nice I na nandito po kayo. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon, Ma'am. <laughs> All right. Hi. So, mukhang excited na sila for today, Ma'am Mer. Hello, Ma'am Susan. Ayan si Ma'am Susan. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Ayan, kinausap po ako ni Ma'am Susan the other day na yun, mag, mag ano din po si Ma'am sa ating mga. Excited din po si Ma'am. And I think nagsimula na rin po si Ma'am. Mag yes, parang I saw her. Ng I saw videos. her comments. <laughs> yes. While I was browsing the comments. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am, for joining. And so, yes, we have 68 here in Zoom, Miss Pam. How about there? We already have 174 people in YouTube Live, ma'am. So, siguro, let's get the ball rolling, ma'am, no? Oh, okay. Okay. So, to start this program... Let's have an audio visual presentation of the nationalistic song followed by a prayer. <laughs> Oh 
As we gather here in the harbor of her safety, we thank you for fellowship and family. We ask that you will strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. Lord, would you fill us with your peace so that as we journey onwards, we would pour out your love and grace to others. We ask that our souls would catch the wind of your spirit so that we would take your promises to all the earth. We thank you for everyone gathered here today. Thank you that you know each of us by name and have caused us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely. As we surrender ourselves in adoration, we ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts today. Come fill our lives with your love. Fill our conversations with your grace and truth. Fill our recognition with your presence. We ask this for your glory and praise. Please guide our hearts as we make our decisions from this moment on. We seek you first in all we do. We give you our knowledge, our skills, our experiences, and our bond together. May we be always mindful of all the learnings we've acquired throughout our training. We confess that we are nothing without you and our trust is in you completely. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Sir Rudel, and to ICT Unit at all SBO. Uh, this is our third camp wide meetup. Yes, no? Uh, and it's uh, very, very nice to see uh, comments, no? The, the, the outputs of our teachers who share their best practices to other educators all around the, the globe. No? So I was enjoying uh, reading their comments in module one and module two. Okay, so Ms. Pam, do you have something to ask to our participants? Oh, man. Because um, we asked in our group chat if they are already working on their module two. And we are very happy that we saw a lot of posts and collage of a screenshots of their work that they have already completed most of them. Again, so congratulations, everyone who have already completed. And for those who are still doing their um, task for setting module two, um, of course, you still have, um, you still have a few days left to continue working on our modules. But congratulations for everyone. Now we have a question for para sa ating mga nandito sa Zoom and nasa YouTube, um, nasa YouTube live stream po natin. Can you please type in the comment section what are your significant takeaways um, in module two? Or what is something that is worth remembering or worth sharing? Ano yung pinaka highlights niyo po sa module two? Can you please yeah, share niyo naman po sa ating chat box kung ano yung um, mga naalala niyo, mga significant takeaways niyo. Ayan, hintayin natin mamweng yung kanilang mga messages. Mm -hmm. And ma'am, today I am very excited for because we don't have um not we don't have one, not two, but we have three very important resource speakers po, no? Antayin natin sila mama. Yes. Yeah, so exciting. So again, um let us call our two teachers who are not yet here. Yeah, so hindi natin you're gonna miss a lot pag hindi po kayo nag tune in ngayon. Yan, meron na po ba tayo, Ma'am Weng? May mga comments na po ba tayo? Let me see. Wait.
Ayan, si Ma'am, si Ma'am Joyce. Ayan. What's, uh, yung nagano sa kanya siguro, what structure is the, ano, analyzing media. Ayan. Oo nga, Ma'am Wang, di ba, we, ako pong naalala ko yung two perspectives in the field of media literacy. Yung protectionist approach and empowerment approach. And in-emphasize talaga nila doon yung importance ng media literacy sa mga ituturo natin siya sa ating estudyante, both the consumption and the production of media. So, how we really have to be critical and teach our students for to be critical of their consumption and production ng media. Okay, yeah. so we also have here, they have learned two approaches, the protectionist and empowerment approaches. So these are new terms to us, educators. Yeah. Meron sa YouTube, ma'am, magbasa ko. Okay. Ayan. I remember si Ma'am Gina Ver uh, Verano. I remember the NAMLA framework on analyzing uh, media messages. Ayan. Si Ma'am Julian Marbella, good afternoon po. I mean, ano pala siya nag-click lang siya. <laughs> si, ano yan? Ito pa. Si Ma'am Kathleen Asabel. Analyzing media messages and the art of questioning. Ayan. They have similar observations. Yeah, uh, analyzing. They, oops, yeah, yeah, analyzing media messages, uh, diversity of media, uh -huh, experiences no, of co-educators. This is also what I like in the program. So you've got to learn the values, the practices of other educators, from other countries, the diversity of media from, I can see who sent, I can see who sent this message. So, analyzing media products. Yeah, media so questions and answer routine. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about in FB? Sige po, magbasa tayo ng last two, ma'am, no? Um, from Ma'am Evelyn Sanchez, my learning for Mojo 2 is to look deeper at the messages of media um, and what we consume. Yeah, and then last po si Ma'am Naira. Hello po, Ma'am Recondola. Analysis of advertisement and the values. Yeah, no, na emphasize mo. Okay. All right, okay. Ma'am Wen. So it seems that uh, everybody is learning a lot, right, Miss Pam? Yeah, but we can learnings. Oh, ang comments. Mamaya natin sila babasahin. So this time, uh, let's have the person behind MOOC, the number one MOOCer. <laughs> Division of Calamba City, no other than our assistant schools division superintendent, a very brilliant, guapo, no, na si Sir JP E. Lopo. Let's give him a brilliant, ang tawag dito yung virtual applause. Virtual, virtual applause. Yes, thank you so much, Mom Wang and Miss Pam. And I would also like to, to greet no, and thank our schools division superintendent who is also with us today, Madam Susan Biel Oribiana. No? Thank you so much po for joining us. Ayun, sa mga sinabi ni Ma'am Weng, wag kayong maniniwala doon sa adjectives na ginamit. Tayong guwapo lang ang tama doon. The rest, you can forget about them. Ha? Sige po. Muli, magandang magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. And I'm very glad that you are able to join us once again when this is our third meetup for the massive open online course on English for media literacy, and this is designed for us uh, educators. No, And I'm very happy that we have uh, 302 uh, participants tuning in with us via the YouTube live of them at Columbus City, and we have 81 participants. To our school heads who are here with us and PSDSS, palambing naman ano, baka nakaligtaan lang ng ating mga kasamahan na uh, ngayon ay may session tayo ulit. If you can send messages to your GCs uh, for them to be able to 
take part in this uh, afternoon session. No? Uh, we'll appreciate it. Sige po. Let me just uh, pull up and share my screen so that we can begin. Sige. Kindly confirm, Ma'am Weng, no, kung nakikita na itong screen na sinishare ko ngayon. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you very much. So yes, once po, again, this po. thank you. This is our third meetup. So if this is the first time that you're joining us, walang problema. Uh, we, we are very glad that you are here with us. Sa mga nakakatatlo na plus yung orientation natin. So ayan, uh, medyo makukompleto ninyo yung attendance. Which I would like to reiterate, that's part of the requirements for us to become eligible to uh, the celebration of learning after finishing the MOOC. That's the course itself. And at the same time, the camp. This is the camp that what we are doing. No? Sige, ayan na. Kung wala kayo dyan sa pictures na nakikita nyo ngayon sa photo collage. So I think you have to stay so towards the end or until the end of the program or of this episode so that you'll be able to uh, join us in the photo opportunity session. Ayan. So I just like to share this very important quote for the second module of our course from Joseph Albers that says, good teaching is more of giving the right questions instead or rather than giving of right answers. So most of the time we're concentrated, we focus on finding the right answers, forgetting about giving the right or the correct questions. Baka naman hindi nakakatama o hindi nakakapagbigay ng tamang sagot ang ating mag-aaral ay hindi tama at hindi makabuluhan ang tanong na ibinibigay natin sa kanila. And this afternoon, uh, in the MOOC Module 2 for EMLE, for uh, educators, you were able to see, encounter, and um, deal with a lot of questions, suggested questions that we can ask our students, not only in teaching media literacy for those who are teaching the subject, not only in incorporating concepts about media literacy for those teaching languages, be it in English and Filipino, and of course, because we are joined by other teachers who are non-English language teachers, but they can also find the help or meaning to these questions that they can use in their classes and even in their personal and professional lives. No? So once again, this is the course developed by George Mason University. Baka may naliligaw pa rin, ha? Uh, ito ang ating course, no? Although you can take other courses that are, that are simultaneously being offered. But then again, uh, for the purpose of this MOOC camp that we are doing, so here's the title of the course, head, uh, led by Professor Dr. Joan Kangshin. That's the associate, she's the associate professor from George Mason University. And akalain nyo yun, June 13 matatapos to. So halfway na rin tayo halos sa, sa course na to after next week. And I just would like to highlight some of the camp outputs during the last session. Can you remember these? No? Meron ba kayong ginawa nito? Did you submit your output? So last time, we had a game. Kasi di ba sinabi natin that online classes, online sessions, trainings at that should not be boring and should not cause us Zoom fatigue. Pag sinabi natin Zoom fatigue, yung screen fatigue na all throughout the session, nakatitig lang tayo sa nakikita natin sa ating screen. So at the end of the session, at the end of the day, masakit ang ulo, masakit ang mata. And that's going to cause us additional harm physically and um, in terms of health. No, So ayan. Uh, kaya ginawa natin medyo interactive and I'm very glad that uh, a lot of you were able to provide us sample outputs or concrete outputs during the stand where you stand. So palakpakan natin sila, like we can offer them our physical clap or a virtual clap uh, sa ating mga nakatutok sa live. We can also congratulate these teachers, these people who are with us in this MOOC camp from DepEd Calamba City. No? Nakakatawa no, na habang nakikinig ka, ginagawa mo yon. And uh, next time gagawin natin ito, i-action nyo na talaga. Pwede kayong mag-drawing sa bahay ninyo in your learning spaces kung saan dyan ang strongly agree, disagree, tapos show us where you are going so that you are not just sitting. No? Thank you so much, Ma'am Tapia, Ma'am De Leon, Ma'am Manaig, um, Ma'am Marbella, Ma'am Fulhensho, and 
Ma'am Domingo, no? Parang ano, uh, women dominate the world, no? Pero mamaya meron tayong sample naman from our male counterparts, no? Ayan. And they provided us their reasons. At sabi ko naman sa inyo, hindi kailangan printed. Although I uploaded a template in our Facebook group, yung iba sabi ko pwede yung drawing and I was so amazed kagaya ni Ma'am Fulhenso no nakapag-drawing pa talaga siya nakapaglagay pa siya ng ng caricature no yeah very good si Ma'am uh, Nevi Nevea ay actual picture naman niya in uniform I'm guessing she's in uniform no so hindi natin makikita ngayon yung mga sinabi nila but if you're interested to find out you can check their comments where they uploaded these photos and you can ask them questions or if you would like to comment that you're agreeing with their answers no sige congratulations and thank you very much the rest if you have not uploaded your output you can still do so in the thread designated for this one in our fb page next i'd like to highlight then naman your outputs remember we have we had two choices one is either you're going to create your infographic or infographics about media literacy, something that you can share to your colleagues or share with your students as to what this media literacy is. Kasi ang goal natin ultimately is not just to keep the learning within ourselves, but for the rest to be able to know something, especially those who are not taking this course. Para may alam sila, ah, yung pala yung media, may traditional pala, may new or digital media pala. And these are very good samples. Uh, Hindi naman sinasabi na ang nakikita nyo ngayon, ito yung pinakamagaganda. No? So may mga marami pa magaganda and we appreciate your work. no We have more than, more or less 200 of you who have shared their outputs. Yung iba naligaw lang, no? nandun sa kabilang thread na pasama. But don't worry, rest assured that we are reading your outputs, that we are very happy and that we can relate to your statements. No? Nakakatawa din yung iba that they search for some quotes quotable quotes given by credible personalities in education and other fields no while we appreciate that mas na appreciate natin yung galing sa inyo no na kayo ang bumuo ng sarili ninyong thoughts be it so simple as these that you are seeing pero nang galing sa inyo what was your journey all about that's the second no ang nakikita niyo photo collage of what it was like how life has been in this module 1 first module no sige thank you so much Ma'am Sandra, uh, I don't know kung Ma'am or Sir Juji, uh, Ma'am Arlene, uh, Ma'am Regine, and we still have some more dito sa next part, no? Si Ma'am Malu. We also, uh, sorry, sorry for that. Let me just go back to this. Hinighlight ko itong gawa ni, uh, sorry, I don't apologize. Hindi ko makita ulit yung pangalan ni Ma'am. Na It's like a combination of, uh, of, yung kanyang uh, journey of the MOOC tapos what's in the module one itself no so uh, siguro if 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 I can offer a suggestion na mas mapapaganda ito yung iba video one task one ano yung significant take away mo dyan mas maganda sa pero this is very good no pag tiningnan mo pa lang kung ako bagong MOOCer o kaya next time that we're offering this MOOC again that's uh, the same way I told you last time na bumabalik naman at umiikot yung courses. No? So pag i-offer natin, pwede natin itong gamitin with the permission of, sorry, hindi ko makita kasi mayroon nakataklob sa itaas. No? But you are seeing the name. Ma'am Sanchez ba to? Uh, sorry for that. No? Uh, pwede natin hiramin ito kay Ma'am at ipakita na uh, ano bang inaabangan natin inaasal sa module 1. Ito ang mga tasks na gagawin. And si Sir Marius, thank you so much also for sharing your uh, thoughts with us. So muli palakpakan natin ang ating mga virtual sharers and hopefully we can have some more the next time around. No? Sige. Now let's proceed. Ito nga, let me just share a very important con concept uh, that we studied in module 2. Sa mga mag-uumpisa pa lang ng module 2, don't worry. You have the entire week to finish, gaya ng sinasabi natin. This MOOC camp is designed for you to be able to know a little bit ano bang pagdadaanan ko, anong meron sa module 2. Kumbaga, ito ang tulong ng mga nauuna sa medyo maraming ginagawa. We understand, every one of us is busy. Eh... Pero siyempre, despite being busy, uh, we have to prioritize, we have to set time uh, for our professional development. Kaya nga, no, uh, parang wala tayong lahat karapatan magsabi na napapagod ako at busy ako, hindi ko magagawa yan. If I can tell you that even our superintendent, who's the busiest person and <laughs> was a lot of responsibility, has 
has joined us and uh, she's very willing to to finish the course till the end and learn something also so kumbaga kung si ma'am nga kaya niyang gawin if if we she's she's willing to to do everything for her to be able to learn some more tayo pa kaya no so yeah tulong-tulong tayo that's the the goal that's the objective why we have our camp so very important itong approaches na to no protectionist empowerment paano ka nga ba magturo di ba lahat tayo gumagamit ng media be it printed or uh, new media tapos combination ginagamit natin yan paano ba uh, bahala na mga bata kung may mali doon o uh, they have some other ideas uh, is it protectionist approach or empowerment approach that we are using and para magawa yan we were given actually two frameworks yon isa itong very import importante no very important the namle key questions what's good in here is that you are not going to uh, uh, to think of questions on your own Pwede ka nang kumuha dito. And as part of the explanation in the video that you watched, ang sinasabi dito, you are not, uh, you are not bounded uh, na ito lang ang itanong mo. You can uh, add more. You can think of questions that you can that you would like to add or that you think fits the situation. Hindi kailangan lahat ito itanong. Pwede lang kung ilan lang ang itatanong ninyo, which are very important in relation to the subject or to the content that you are take, teaching at that particular moment or teaching learning delivery episode no so napakaganda nito um i save ninyo ang copy na to no we are allowed naman to download this these materials that you can find in the module and this afternoon nga we are very happy hindi ko napatataganin alam kong excited na excited na kayo to learn some more last time during our ways forward i told you that uh, we will be joined by the three by three of some of the brilliant MOOC leaders here in the Philippines and to add to that, abroad. So hindi lang dito sa MOOC, pinapangalat at isinishare ang MOOC, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas. No? So, but I think uh, I'm safe to say that we are the MOOC capital of the world. In terms of the number of participants, in terms of the number of MOOCers, mamaya isi-share sa atin, babanggitin sa atin ng ating mga kasama, ilan-ilan ba ang mga camp members or MOOCers na hawak nila. And I think a little bit of their journey to inspire us some more. And uh, one or two of them will be sharing uh, some techniques, some specific strategies that they have used and they are using and that they can suggest for us to use when we teach media literacy or when we incorporate media literacy in our subject. So hindi ko napatatagalin pa. I'm going to introduce the three of them and then we'll be meeting them the soonest I'm done with the introduction. First of, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet our first uh, invited resource speaker for today. She is a U.S. Department of State alumna and Korea Philippines Teacher Exchange Program alumna. Currently, she's working as a senior high school teacher at San Juan National High School, Senior High, and the OIC Planning and Research SEPs at DepEd San Juan. She's the project head of the American TESO Leadership Training of Trainers and the Regional English Language Office, that's U.S. Embassy in Manila. She's a TESOL awardee, and I'd like to add, she's a consistent, a yearly TESOL awardee of Betty Azar Grant for practicing ESL EFL in 2017 at Seattle, Washington. So Ms. Angeles is a recipient of different project grants under the US Embassy in the Philippines. She has been teaching the English language for more than 10 years. She pioneered massive open online course. Remember last time during the introduction or in, in our orientation, I was one of the very few who started the, the MOOC and she's also one of my class base back then in 2014. Her objectives are to build a community of practice for educators and continuing professional development. She has more than 2,000 members in her online community. If you can visit that, if you would like to be a member also, she uh, heads the Shaping the Way We Teach English uh, Facebook group. Ms. Angeles received her undergraduate degree in secondary education, major in English from Jose Rizal University, her graduate degree at the National Teachers College and her postgraduate degree at Manuel L. Quezon University. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome, uh, I'd like you to help me welcoming Dr. Vina A. Angeles. 
Hello, good afternoon. Thank you so much, Sir JP, for that wonderful introduction. And I'm so happy again because I think this will be my second time to share with um, Dev Ed Binyan. Yeah. I think this is my first time in Kalamba. Yeah. Uh, in Kalamba. Thank you so yeah. much, sir. So in, in your province. Thank you so much for having us here. So I'm going to share one specific media that we are actually like using, especially in comes uh, when it terms uh, when it comes to oral communication. So if you, for example, um, handling a, a subject like oral communication or speaking classes, I think this would be one of the effective application or media that you might want to use. All right. So um, may I ask if they are familiar with Flipgrid, sir? Sige po. Uh, have you encountered Flipgrid before or have you even used it? Uh, Dr. Rina, are you sharing a screen or? Not yet, sir. Not okay, yet. Sige. Uh, sige. Uh, but I'll stop sharing one no, for to give it to you. All right. So thank you so much for those who responded yes. And for those actually responded no, that's a good response as well. Because today I will be introducing to you one technique wherein you can integrate media. And at the same time, you can help your students um, develop their speaking skills. So we also did this activity last week year with the DOE MOOC participants. So allow me to share with you my screen, but I'm also going to share with you the link that you can follow. So you may join there. So yeah, you can check the, the chat box. Yes. Um, yeah, Miss Pam and Miss Wayne kindly get the link also and share it with those who are watching us. We have 348 in our uh, YouTube live, no? Thank okay. You. So example, this is an activity that is that is fit here or suitable here. So we're going to have reflective speaking with peer feedback via Flipgrid. So what are we going to do? At the end of this task, okay, you should be able to summarize unit three because I believe you are now in week number three, right, Sir JP? Then we're going to identify key points useful for your line of work. Then outline ways to adapt adopt or apply your learning in your own context. So you're going to record a three to five minute talk adhering to rubrics below with the following content. So here are our content, discussion of your three main takeaways from unit three, discussion of your plans to apply, adopt or adopt your learning from unit three at your own work at DepEd. Then after your video submission, do a peer feedback to two to three of your classmates' submission based on the rubrics provided below. And here are the rubrics, the clarity, cl co completeness, clarity, and coherence. So this is just one example. And I will be showing with, with you now some of the entries from our participants. So you might want to do this as well and integrate this activity in your own classroom. So let's see some examples here. And then later on, maybe I will be asking at least one to two participants or JP if they can at least record themselves. Um, I know that on the spot, um, speaking is not too easy, but we will challenge, all right? We will challenge our participants because I believe there are head teachers, um, principals as well, and then non-teaching personally. We will just see, all right? And challenge them because I know that they have great things to offer, right? And we will discover them, all right? And we will appreciate their submission as well. So this basically is the instruction on what are you going to do for week number three. We're going to have there the, the recordings of yourself stating your main takeaways. But for example, you are not yet done doing week number three. You might want to state there your main takeaways for week number two or week number one. Because I, I, I believe that not all of you are now in week or module three or in module two or in module one. So just for example, you are still starting. So you might want to state there your learnings from module one or your learnings from module two, right? So it, it does not necessary to do module three if you're not yet there. Okay, so I'm going to share with you some of the examples. I hope that the sound will be good as well. So they can see some entries. Okay, I'll just... Back here. Yeah, while you're looking for the entries, Dr. Rina, so these were the samples no, in the uh, provided by the Depart Philippine Department of Energy. 
And actually, these are some of the examples of ah. my students ah, as well. Okay. So, so in oral mm -hmm. communication class, because I believe if you are having this activity, it will help your students develop their self-confidence as well. Because we cannot do personal um, speech, especially in oral communication. In the second quarter, you have there so many speeches to submit, right? So they can record themselves, like, for example, delivering reading manuscript, delivering um, memorized speech, impromptu speech. So, so these are some of the entries of the students. But we are going to a specific example from our MOOC participants, DOE, particip or DOE participants. Let's yeah, see. that's correct, no, Doc Rina, kasi dati nung una-una natin, nung unang panahon, pagka may pinapamemorize na po si teacher, is iniisa-isa niya ang pinapag-recite, naubos na yung isang buong linggo, form recitation, pero wala naman sa curriculum guide na ganong kahaba ang gagawin niya, hindi ba? Yes. And so this is one way that they can do, uh, everybody can just record in their own and post that on the flip grid and they can do peer rating and they, the teacher can also rate and manage uh, checking all the submissions. Now, thank you, Dr. Rina, for sharing yes. this with us again. Let's have a Yes, sample. indeed. So we're going to check here one example. And let us check one entry. So as you can see here, the entries of our MOOC participants. And let's check one example. One moment. I think this one is the review already. There you go. Sir JP, is the sound audible for the video? Okay. Let me sh stop share again and then share it again. Okay. Thank you so much. Sometimes this happens, the audio is the problem. All right. Mute ka, Sir JP. Ah, sorry, <laughs> I was on mute also. This is also happening uh, during the live session. So, okay, na, Dr. Rina. Uh, yes. later. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. Audible? All right, I'm yeah, going to good. start. So, this is one entry that you might want to do here, Sir JP, because this one really help will help you a lot, especially in improving yourselves when it comes to speaking activity or skills. So, there you go. Hi, my name is Kate. And in this activity, we are tasked to summarize Unit 1 to give our three takeaways and our plan to apply our learnings in our current job in the Department of Energy. So in Unit 1, it was discussed that when scientists answer questions, they use evidences to help them prove something. Uh, this was further elaborated when we tried to answer the question whether the Earth is really getting warmer. Uh, they measure temperature, snow, um, and clouds. And indeed, through these evidences, they were able to say that the Earth is really getting warmer. Uh, we, were able, we were able to discuss also the importance of um, preview in, previewing informational text. Um, and through this, we can uh, get new information without really uh, reading through uh, the entire material word per word. We would know whether the, the material is really relevant. Uh, so we can do this by looking into the title, the picture, the captions, the subheadings, and then the first paragraph. Uh, we were able to discuss also in Unit 1 the difference between climate change and global warming. It was mentioned that these two terms are used interchangeably in the past because they thought that the two terms means the same, um, but it actually is not true. So um, in unit one, my three takeaways are the number one is the importance of evidences. Although I am not a scientist, I am an HR practitioner. When we try, when we uh, try to do the decision making, um, it is important that we are backed up by legal evidences. 
Um, we need to look into previous cases that are related to the issues that we are uh, that the issues that we have right now. Um, and it's also important to have that mindset that we can learn from other people. We learn, we need to get their ideas, to know their uh, to know their best practices. Um, what they did good, what they what went wrong, so that when we do our own decision making, we are also guided. Um, All and- right, so probably I'm going to stop there, but you can also see some entries later on. Maybe one or two members of your MOOC participants um, will be challenged to submit their works as well. So basically, this is uh, this how flip grip worked. So you can also see some evaluation coming from your students and then they can actually respond using video as well so here as sir jp mentioned before we are we are actually trying to improve ourselves not to do the traditional speaking activity wherein they will be presenting in front of the class and then sometimes you know the self-confidence of the students is not is, is is actually a problem there they do not want to step up and then talk but with this activity since they they will be recording themselves and then they can actually repeat as long as they are actually satisfied with their work at least they will see their the progress of their video and the progress of their speech as well all right so this is just one basic example wherein we can integrate media into our teaching techniques as a teacher and at the same time not only for teachers but for the other field as well like for example for non-teaching personnel, if you wanted to have speaking engagement, because we also want to include, uh, we also want to improve the speaking engagement of our non-teaching personnel. So we can also have this type of activity, right? So they can also integrate here all the learnings that they have. And at the same time, if they want to put some music, if you want to make it better, like adding music or subtitle, we can do it in Flipgrid. So this is basically one of the sharings that I could actually escalate to you. And I'm happy to see that there are some teachers who are also familiar with Flipgrid. But for those who are not yet familiar, I actually sent to you the link wherein you can use that. And then you can follow the pattern that we have there and then try to use in your own classroom. So thank you so much, Sir JP. I hope this helps you a lot. Or I hope not really a lot, but in a way, it will help your teachers to adopt one strategy that they can use in have in, in their speaking engagement activity, especially in their classes. Thank you so yeah. much, Sir Thank JP, so much, and Dr. to the Nano, rest of the MOOC participants here present in your division. Thank you so much. Yes. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Rina, for sharing Flipgrid. No? So you just go to the link. It's it's user-friendly, and you can use it for free. No, And you just have to discover signing in as, as a teacher, and there's a way for the students how they can upload their work and things like that. But if you need more of how to use Flipgrid, how you can have an active account and make use of this in your classes, I think we can also talk about this some more in the future. No, bali yes. patikim lang ang gagawin natin ngayon. No? All right. Also, Sige. Sir JP, I, I believe that um, this weekend they can submit their work and then right after maybe I could escalate to you some of the submission of your MOOC participants for those who actually um, take the challenge, right? So I've already sent the link there. Then the guide is there as well. So probably for those students or those participants who will be challenged to do it. So we will glad to see and appreciate your works and effort. And then we will escalate it to you so that you can see as well their performances. Thank you so much uh, for JP. Thank you so much. And we are awarding the best, siguro, the best entry, no? Yes. Sige. I'll, I'll, later, I'll talk more about that when we pr- go to the ways forwards and to the tasks for the camp. No, thank you so much once again, Doc Rina. Thank you and so much. And if you have TV. questions, you can just type them in the chat box. No, and we'll go. We'll address them a little later. No, once we're done with the presentation. Thank you. So at this point, uh, let me continue introducing to you two more of our of our resource persons. Uh, can I just check if Doc Mabu is already with us in the session room? Uh, she's, he's, he's still working with another conference that he's chairing an event there, no? But sige. Doc Rina, if you may uh, start now and sharing your screen so I can introduce. Uh, All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much once again. Mamshi, are you ready? Is it okay if we 
uh, go to, to to you now. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, thank you. So next, I'm very much pleased to introduce to you uh, the one we call as the MOOC mother of the Philippines. She started as an English teacher, school administrator, division English supervisor, until she becomes in the until she reaches the position where she is in right now. She earned her master's degree for English language teaching at the University of Southeastern Philippines, Davao City, and her doctor of educational, educational management at the University of Mindanao, Davao City. Since 2015, she has been initiating and facilitating the participation of teachers to the massive open online courses in Davao del Norte and spread the MOOC fever to various parts of the Philippines. A firm believer in providing equal educational opportunities for all teachers. She enjoined teachers from the schools of Luma children of the indigenous people's tribes and those assigned in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas to participate in the MOOC. If you can remember the video I showed you, uh, during the first orientation that we had. So sa kanila yun galing, no? Her effective management strategies of the MOOC camps resulted to the high achievement and increasing participation rates of the MOOC camps in Region 11. Her irreplaceable role as a mentor in sparking and inspiring the American English and MOOC movement in the Philippines has been spreading far and wide. Her influence as a leader to her mentees from other regions and to include the MOOC camps in Thailand, Japan, Abu Dhabi, and the biggest camp here in the Kingdom of Cambodia or there in the Kingdom of Cambodia. And add ko lang no, kasama ko si Mamshi na mag-train sa mga MOOC facilitators from Mongolia. That's truly remarkable. She is an English e, an e teacher alumna of the US Department of State and a learning facilitator of the National Educators Academy of the Philippines. Currently, she's the assistant schools division superintendent of the division of Panabo City. Oh no, Chamboanga na ngayon, no? Uh, da uh, Davao del Davo Norte, del sorry. Norte. <laughs> yeah, Davao del Norte, sorry for that, no? Uh, region uh, 11 Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to, to receive with a warm, calambenous uh, uh, applause, Dr. Rebecca C. Sagot. Hello, good afternoon, and mabuhay tayong lahat. Allow me to pay courtesies to the co-somos of the land, our very own Dr. Sosan Oribiana, the school's division superintendent, and ASDS JP Lopo. I used to call him Nakshi, as he calls me Mamshi. And to all our education program supervisors and public school district supervisors, we, the chiefs of the school's governance operations division and the curriculum implementation division, the school principals and the classroom teachers joining the massive open online course on English for media literacy. Once again, a pleasant afternoon and mabuhay tayong lahat. Truly, my heart is full to the brim this afternoon seeing the strength in the number of the MOOC participants joining this course for English for media literacy. I still recall in 2014 when I first launched and initiated the MOOCs in our division, although I was not part of the pilot group which the U.S. Embassy handled in 2014. I just saw them on Facebook doing the MOOC, so I decided to look for ways in how I would be able to get into MOOCing. So I started it with my daughter and uh, a friend, a teacher friend, and we tried uh, a course for writing. And then I realized that the course was really good and it had provided a lot of learning to the three of us. And it happened so that the U.S. Embassy also invited for anyone who would like to host for a MOOC camp in the Philippines, so I decided to try and then got started with 50 teachers and then bale, eka 51 ako doon sa MOOCamp na yon in our division. It was hard at the start because uh, we were all grouping in the dark and in the past year since 20, 
2009 to 2011, several surveys were done as regards technology integration of our teachers and the level of technology awareness of our teachers in Davao del Norte. And we found out based from the survey that this is the most learning need our teachers had. And in fact, during the time, the information superhighway was but a road less traveled and the cyberspace was such a lonely planet then. So when we when we tried MOOCing in 2014, from 51 we grew to 161, then to 300 plus, then to 500 plus, to 1,000 plus, to 3,000 plus, and there were over 10,000 uh, MOOC completers in um, the region, in the Davao region, because MOOCing does not only stop in our division, but it spread to the different uh, divisions in Region 11 and also crossing uh, the divisions of other regions like Caraga region comprising Surigao, Agusan del Sur and then we also have from Antique in, in um, the Visayas region and uh, we also reach out to other countries uh, extending our services to our OFWs teaching in other countries like the, those mentioned by Sir JP. Actually, MOOCing is uh, a work basically by the heart, not just by the mind, but by the heart. And once we get into MOOCing, it is uh, deemed necessary that we bring along with us not only our brains, but also our passion, our dedication, and commitment to learning towards continuing professional development. It is good when we see ourselves growing professionally, but it feels greater when we bring along others to grow and flourish along with us. So let our desires for continuing professional development go beyond gaining certificates, but it must be more about uh, gaining the knowledge, the skills, and the attitude towards teaching others how to teach another, leading others so that they also can lead another, and working not in competition but working in collaboration. The book camp in the Philippines, or book camp Philippines per se, where I, JP, Rina, and Romualdo and other book leaders uh, are, are members, are actually uh, considered as community-based MOOC camps, geographically uh, dispersed uh, MOOC camps with geographically dispersed participants of massive open online course. But a good thing about this diversity and being this di diverse and dispersed is we still have the chance to connect with each other just like what we are doing now. We collaborate rather than compete with each other and in fact the word collaboration is spelled differently by us it's cool love operation because it's cool when we receive or when i receive assistance from the rest of the bookers and it's love and i am being able to extend also assistance to others and it's collaboration because we are doing all these things together we always find it a pleasure and an honor to to have joined your camp and to see how vibrant you are and that vivacity of succeeding each one has, uh, especially in the camp, as seen also by the outputs that you presented, by the different uh, requirements, postings that you have in your Facebook group. It's uh, really very splendid. These are really very splendid, rather. So congratulations for all of you, and uh, we hope that you're getting into the mooking or you're mooking a difference will not stop here but this shall be the beginning of mooking without ending and then mentoring uh, without ending also others who you know who participated to mook camps like this um in Davao del norte most uh, i i about 80 percent of our teachers in Davao del norte have already participated to MOOCs and have joined boot camps and also our education program supervisors and uh, our district supervisors even bef 
even during 2015 and 2016, they were into mooking. So most of them were into that. And we were glad because uh, such, such uh, event or such activity has led to the to becoming better especially now that we are in the pandemic where the teaching has changed tremendously where we have to transition from the the traditional classroom teaching to something blended and it was also during this time of mooking that i was given the chance to host a special training on blended learning in the flipped classroom in 2015 actually when that training was given to the teachers um, it, it was seemingly considered as irrelevant training because some of those participants said that they cannot use the training in their context but we just didn't realize that now we are in the pandemic and we really are forced to do blended learning in the flipped classroom aside from offering the curriculum or delivering the curriculum in the the most common way especially in our context which is the modular delivery of the curriculum and uh, i am glad that um, i have led this kind of activity in the division and i hope too that you too can make it also as one of your outreach programs to be learning beyond borders with others and to serve beyond learning and to think of others and self as our way of paying forward and then as our way also of uh, providing ourselves with some sense of fulfillment and accomplishment without counting any in uh, something in return uh, when during the time that I was an education program supervisor then and who was then uh, assess eligible but not yet um, I was not yet uh, designated as an OIC assistant school division superintendent. It was then that I thought about thinking more of what I can do rather than what I can be. And MOOCing uh, has been considered as the best things that happen not only to me but also to the teachers in Davao del Norte and the whole Region 11 and also in the neighboring regions in the Mindanao uh, in uh, in Mindanao because it has provided them also the the shape of uh, the way they teach and learn and uh, become acquainted also with the processes that we are currently having now so with this, I am really glad and happy that you too uh, and we are on the same boat and we're sailing on the same boat and we hope to reach um, the direction and we hope to reach the destination uh, sooner after a few weeks. I believe that some have difficulties, especially in navigating the web, but always remember that every day uh the most difficult roads lead us to the beautiful destinations and we're all looking forward to the grand celebration of learning and uh wherein we can celebrate our successes especially in the journey we have had in the books and hopefully we'll see you also leading your own MOOC camp so continue enrolling to a MOOC and then lead a camp build a tribe of uh, 21st century leaders and build also a great empire and a community of practice who are um, determined to continually helping others how to teach and help another so thank you also for this chance give it to me to share with you uh, and to somehow talk to you and hope you too can uh, can get an inch even a little inch also of an inspiration to continue on this journey so once again good afternoon and mabuhay tayong lahat and happy booking and let's all continue booking forward for a difference yeah thank you so much our MOOC mother moms doctor asds Rebecca Sagot. No, maraming maraming salamat. No, she's very busy today, but uh, she says she'll find time to meet us to share some words of encouragement and share her journey and the journey of the thousands of MOOCers 
whom she has led to um, achieving and um, making things worthwhile and sharing the experiences. No, uh, maraming maraming salamat. Magbabalik sa atin si uh, Madam no si uh, Ma'am si sa training yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na we'll have some sort of training for those who would like to become MOOC facilitators. Yung binigay naming training sa Mongolia ibibigay din natin sa atin when we have time. Siguro pag break na ang uh, academic break na tayo because we don't want to 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 add some more to the tasks that you are doing right now, no? So as part of policy natin kaya nga hapon tayo nag sessions, no, para hindi nakakaabala. Once again, uh Ma'am Ma Dr. Beck, Ma'am Shi, maraming maraming salamat for joining us. Now, hindi pa tayo tapos. We have uh, uh, one more. Ang isa sa brilliant leaders of Massive Open Online Courses here in the Philippines. At ito ay uh, talagang kahit saan ay makikita mo at matatagpuan. No? He's very busy but again, I'm very thankful that he... Um, he said yes to our invitation. So, let me just introduce our... Next guest this afternoon. So our next guest is a professorial lecturer 10 at the Institute of Education of Far Eastern University in Manila, Philippines. He's a doctor of philosophy and applied linguistics candidate at De La Salle University, Manila. He holds a master's degree in teaching English from the Philippine Normal University and an international TESOL certificate from Arizona State University, United States of America. He is an alumnus of the 2018 U.S. Department of State's e-teacher program and has trained at the University of Oregon and Portland State University. He has already facilitated over 15 MOOCs since 2015 and has coordinated MOOC camps with thousands of teachers and students across the Philippines. He has presented his research in several countries in Asia, in Australia, and in the USA. His most recent publication is a book chapter on MOOC camps in the Philippines with, sorry, I don't know how to say it, online educators for teachers of English as a global language in 2020. He currently serves as a strand coordinator for professional and personal and professional development at TESOL International Association. He's a doctorate degree candidate, but we already we all already call him doctor of because of his so much accomplishment accomplishments. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Dr. Romualdo Abuan. Dr. Mabu. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Sir JP Mukapatid. And thank you for having me here. This is actually one of my most favorite uh, part, being with the MOOC camp family. I feel at home and I'm happy that everybody is taking MOOCs, participating in this great online professional learning journey. Okay, um, so JP wanted us to, wanted us to share something about what we do. Uh, for one, we currently are in the journey together. We are also having our virtual MOOC camp with uh, educators here in the Philippines, Cambodia, Taiwan, and Japan. Okay, um, let me share some slides okay, for this sharing today. Okay. Having completed the first MOOC from the University of Pennsylvania, that is English for Media Literacy, I'm equally excited to take this MOOC, EML for Educators. And what I would share with you today would be some practical frameworks that we could use in our classes as we design lessons that would incorporate technology and would target uh, our students to be media literate, but at the same time, responsible producers, not only consumers of media. Okay, um, the first framework that I'm sharing with you would be the technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge framework from uh, Coelho and Mishra, which um, reminds us educators that in this day and age, that technology is already pervasive in the society. The two types of knowledge that are such as content and pedagogical knowledge are not enough for us educators to possess. 
we need to possess another type of knowledge that is called technological knowledge. We cannot teach the way we were taught before, right? And our students these days are already techno-savvy te techno individuals, the alpha generation, the Gen Z and the alpha generation are into technology. And so educators should also be into technology and should be able to harness the power of technology, of information communication, technologies and media into our classroom. Um, according to this framework, an ideal teacher in the 21st century should possess a, the combination of all of this knowledge, and that is the technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge. I'm sure uh, some of us have struggled. Uh, some of us are digital migrants in terms of the use of, of technology, but I believe this is already the, the setup. This is the future, the now normal of teaching. And therefore, we need to be reminded by this framework so that we keep on moving forward and uh, equipping ourselves for our students. Um, another framework that we could use in uh, technology or media integration into our classes would be Pentedura summer model of technology integration. SAMR stands for substitution, augmentation, modification, and redefinition. In the substitution level, technology acts as direct substitute only with no functional change. While in the augmentation level, uh, technology still acts as a direct substitute, but with some functional improvement. These are just for enhancement. But our target should be the transformation levels. And that consists of the modification and redefinition levels. In the modification level, technology allows for significant task redesign. And finally, in the redefinition level, technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously inconceivable. Let me give you some examples. In the substitution level, um, for instance, um, students may submit a narrative report by typing it in a Microsoft Word document. So instead of asking them to write um, in a piece of paper, they do it in a Microsoft Word document. So that is only substitution. Uh, MS Word doc is substituting the use of paper. While in the augmentation level, students may use Microsoft Word features such as layout, header, and footer, citations, cross-reference, and design. Still, this is in the enhancement level because they are just using uh, the same Microsoft, the same um, application or document. While in the modification level, students may create a collaborative report using an online platform such as Google Docs. They may also insert images, or hyperlinks, okay? And in the redefinition, that's the final level, students may publish their narrative reports through blogs and share their blogs, URLs via Facebook posts and pages or Twitter tweets, okay? So these are some of the examples by which we could be guided in integrating uh, technology or media in our classes. We have to be careful because if we are not, perhaps we could only be doing the substitution or augmentation level, where in fact, our target should be modification and redefinition levels. Um, the summer models are aligned with the Bloom's taxonomy with the substitution and augmentation levels uh, aligned with the lower order thinking skills while the modification and redefinition levels are aligned with the higher order thinking skills, which should be our target. My second to the last framework is the PICRAT model. P-I-C stands for passive, interactive, and creative, which refers to the student's relationship to technology, while the R-A-T stands for replaces, amplifies and transforms, 
which refers to the teacher's use of technology vis-a-vis -vis the traditional practice. Okay, let's have an example here on um, how we could use the PICRET model. The, the PICRET model is a very useful guide so we could see if our choices of media and technology in our classes are facilitating engagement, interaction, or opportunities for creation and evaluation for our students. For instance, if we use lecture with PowerPoint, so that is on the lower part here on the left, that is PR. It means that the teacher's use of technology replaces the traditional practice. So instead of uh, Manila paper, right? While the student's relationship to technology is passive. So would you like that one? It, it's only a replacement, but the students are passive. Now let's go to the center, IA. For instance, um, in this IA, the teacher's use of technology amplifies the traditional practice while students' relationship to technology is interactive. Can you give an example? What, what technology could amplify um, traditional practice? Okay, for one, I would say uh, Facebook Messenger chat, okay? Um, that could amplify our practice. And at the same time, it provides some interaction and engagement among students. Then create a room, a Facebook room, for instance, and then use it for feedbacking for your students or just for checking, checking up on your students. And of course, our uh, important targets here would be on the transformative level and on the creative level. For instance, Video documentary. Okay, I, I will show you one, uh, one sample here that I asked my students to, to do. Um, al although I, I taught this one in the purposive communication class, the freshman university level, but you could actually create your prompts in order for your students to to do something like this, okay? This is an intercultural vlog. I will try to play some parts of it, but of course that's 10 minutes, so I will not be playing everything, just to show you how, and then we will go back to the framework. A country that is known for their accents. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Love for teas. Rich history. And being welcoming to people. And a nation that is known for being secluded and isolated from the world. This is Great Britain and North Korea. Great Britain is one of the most highly sought after countries. All right. So in the 10 minute video, students work collaboratively. We adopted the project project-based learning framework or PBL. And as you can see, there are already so many things happening here, integration of technology, targeting the higher order thinking skills, and then um, uh, making use of the PCRAP model, 
that is video documentary, intercultural blog, allowing the students to be creative, and at the same time, um, transforming my pedagogical practice as a student, as a teacher. So the PICRAT model, as you could see, could be a very useful guide for us, especially in this digital setup of teaching. And finally, um, another guide I'm sharing with you is the XYZ framework in uh, choosing appropriate technology or media. Okay, so the Y axis here refers to the when. When is the student learning? The X is where. Where are they? Where is the student learning? And the Z axis, how is the student learning? For the y-axis, that is synchronous and asynchronous. For the x-axis, that is physical and virtual. And for the z-axis, that is collaborative and individual. This framework could also help us be guided in the choices of technology and media that we employ in our classes. For instance, if you use a lecture capture software such as OBS, I think it's also common in, in DevEd. Okay, that would fall under asynchronous. For Merlot screencast, that could fall under individual. For Can Academy, Canvas, Coursera, that could fall under virtual. Okay, now um, let me give you an example. So this framework would be clearer for us, okay? So um, a while ago, the, a while ago, the intercultural blog activity was published by the students to YouTube. I assigned them to publish it to YouTube to make it public, of course, with their permission as well and their parents' permission. Okay, what do you think of this one? If we are looking at uh, the XYZ platform, okay, let's go back. Okay, again, collaborative vlogs published on YouTube. Okay, where does it fall? I know in the chat box. Where does the collaborative vlog published on YouTube fall under the XYZ framework? Z. Okay, that's collaborative. How about the X, Y? Okay, that could be a combination of collaborative, virtual, and A or C, sync or async, asynchronous. All right, so that is collaborative, virtual, and asynchronous. Okay, how about this one? I think you will also be making your own. This is a Pecha Kucha presentation on uh, MOOC Camp Journey. Okay, our participants will also be doing this one very soon. Hello, I am Mr. Mario De La Cerda of Test the Regional Training Center, Curfield Davao. Head trainer of the Diploma of IT department. I belong to MooCamp One, which dynamically facilitated by Sir Ramwaldo A. Mabuan, also known as Sir Mabu. All right. So uh, I will not be playing it. It's around six minutes and and uh, forty five seconds. Okay. So in this activity, the students created their personal MOOC camp journey on their own pace and place, published it on the Pecha Kucha website, 
and shared the URL in our Facebook group. Okay, so what is this? Of course, we can also analyze using the peak graph model, okay, but we are focusing on the XYZ. Okay, so this is a synchronous, three choices. This is a synchronous, virtual, and individual. Okay. All right. And how about this one? Okay. Real time, I asked my students to access the, the class padlet. Afterwards, they answered my questions. And one of the instructions is for them to comment and engage with their classmates' posts. Okay? First, they created their own Padlet, and then they engaged with their classmates. So using the XYZ framework, what would this be? Individually, they created their own Padlet. Afterwards, they engaged, they commented with their classmates' posts. Uh, yeah, it's a combination of, it's a hybrid now. It's a combination of individual and collaborative. It's virtual and it is synchronous because we did it real time, okay? Another media that I used was the Lucid chart. I just don't have the video right now, but if you could see the video, you would be amazed. I asked my students to do a real-time collaborative mind map making. And it was really amazing to see how, uh, the, how the movements work here, how they were able to build from nothing to this mind map in just 30 minutes. Uh, students were grouped uh, up to 10 members and then, yeah, they, they kept on moving, 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 moving. They also uh, chatted using Discord inside so they could communicate with one another what to put, what not to put, etc. Okay, that is Lucid Chart. So with the XYZ, what is this? This is collaborative, synchronous, and virtual. Yeah. That is amazing. Okay. So <laughs> that's it for now. We are in a digital age already. And I think the pandemic has forced us to reshape, rethink, and reconfigure the way we teach and learn. And we cannot complain anymore. What we can do is to reflect on this, fire up, our engines and face it forward. Thank you very much, Mukapatids. Thank you very much once again, Doc Mabuno. Sigo alin ang tumatak sa inyo do? Which frameworks? Which of the frameworks? No, pwede nyo itype jan ang nagustuhan niyo. And siguro you have some questions and may na parang bitin naman yung binigay sa atin, no? Patikim lang ang lahat kasi um, marami pa naman tayong pagkakataon na magkakasama-sama. Now, let us know in your chat box alin ang mas gusto niyong i-explore pa. You would like to listen to some more of of, of these frameworks, TPAC, XYZs, we have the PICRAT and a lot more. No? Plus the specific um, uh, applications uh, that we can use in teaching. And siguro iniisip ng iba, how do I make use of them in my classes na hindi naman English language classes? No? Uh, paano natin yon? Ang iba siguro sa inyo are asking yourselves, how do I level them down to the level of my students or my learners na LM sila? Uh, medyo bago sa technology. Uh, let us know kung anong gusto nyo mangyari, anong mga interest ninyo or questions that you have in mind. And I think... Um, uh, ngayon pa lang siguro they can commit that they can come back anytime that we would like to invite them again to to join us and discuss some more of these. Tama ba mga mukapatids and mamshi? 
anytime. Yes, yeah. or JP, yes. Si, 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 yeah, sa so mga sumali na doon, uh, I, I I know we have some MOOC campers, MOOCers in this uh, group sa Kalamba na dati nang nakasali sa MOOC Laguna na pinapasilitate ng LSPU, si Doc Mabu ang nag-umpisa doon. Ano? Kaya baka sabihin nyo, ah, parang nakita ko na siya, narinig ko na siya. Siya yon So hindi kayo nagkakamali. So again, Doc Rina, Doc Mabu, and Ma'am Shebeck, thank you very much for joining us. And let us know in the comments kung ano pa ang gusto nyo mangyari to discuss some more on these topics and applications that they we're able to present this afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you again. Thank you so much for JP and to all the participants. Thank you so much. Yeah. And please, please let us know also your feedback, your comments, no? And we would also like you to, to encourage you to, to say thanks. Thank you to our facilitators and sharers this afternoon. Ayan. Siguro may, may mga na-identify na I'm seeing their comments. Uh, a lot of so them let's just... said uh, XYZ. They appreciate XYZ. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Weng, no? For, for reading Pick that. Rat, Siguro... According to Ma'am Arlene Garcia, Pitrat and XYZs. Sige. A few minutes na lang ito, mga ma'am and sir. Thank you so much for staying with us. Ano? Sige. Uh, tuloy ko lang. Ako um... ba Pam, sa FB Live. What do they prefer? Ayan. Sige. Uh, ma'am Wing, uh, uh, habang sumasagot siguro yung mga nasa uh, YouTube okay. natin, no? marami pa rin sila, almost 400 pa rin ang nanonood yan, 300 plus. No? So Sige, we'll share be... ko lang ito para ah, okay. uh, to, to wrap up a bit. No? So ito yung task natin. Uh, we have three choices. Bali magiging apat siya ngayon because of what Dr. Rina presented a while back. No? So again, of all these uh, tasks, you are just going to select one. The, the way we did it last time na may two options. Today, for this week, we have four options. It can be individual or group. You can do it. Idagdag ko na yung framework ng Doc Mabo. No? You can do it synchronous or asynchronous no sige now don't forget to indicate your names uh, on the documents or on the videos kung alin man ang mapipili nyo number one your option is you can create a media message a media message sharing your advocacy any topic ito it can be printed or video media message no thank you so much the second is uh because this is a community of practice, no? this is a professional development community, we would like to get some ideas from others which are applicable in our classes. Kaya ang iba sa inyo, baka pwedeng pumili nitong designing an activity on analyzing media sample with the specific questions and answers. Halimbawa, ito yung topic, ito yung media na gagamitin, anong mga questions ang itatanong. Para kapag kayong ibang teacher sa ibang schools gagamitin din yon titingin na lang sila sa gawa ninyo or they can just modify or redefine your activities. No? And the third one is a video demo lesson or activity on how to do analysis of media. So again, pwede itong group work, pwede itong individual. At pang-apat, yung flip grid na challenge sa atin ni Doc Rina. So ngayon, uh, you are also going to post your, your preparation or your outputs sa ating group. We'll just provide you the thread and the link where you're going to post your uh, preparation or your outputs. No po? Sige, Doc, uh, Doc Weng, Ma'am Weng, go ahead pa. Okay, so ayan from Ma'am Lourdes Dilumban, talaga ang dami ng XYZ's framework na nakaka-appreciate. So I just don't know if Miss Pam could read some more in the FB Live. Ayan, Ma'am Wang, isa lang para nakita ko dito sa YouTube. I like the picture framework um, to examine where I am now as a teacher using technology from Ma'am Lidaya Eras. Yeah, that's very important, no? Baka uh, you, you, you've been using the same thing all throughout different kinds of learner in different time. Kasi bago ng panahon yun, pero nandung ka pa rin sa lower left quadrant, no? And you're not moving up to the to the higher levels. So it's it's a good way for us to reassess ourselves in the way we do teaching in the classroom. All right. 
So shall we proceed to the uh, giving of certificate, to the awarding of certificate to our great speakers? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. A humongous thanks to our very amazing and inspiring MOOCers from the flip grid of Dr. Angeles to Dr. Sagot's collaboration down to the different frameworks presented by Doc Mabu. Doc Makiki, Doc Mabu na rin ako. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. According to Ma'am Rufina Malabanan, it is a great learning and very inspiring daw po kayong lahat. So yan po. Let me read. Where's the certificate? Let me read the certificate of recognition. Republic of the Philippines Department of Education, Region 4A Calabarzon Schools Division of Calamba City presents the certificate of recognition to Dr. Rina Angeles, Dr. For sharing her expertise resulting to a meaningful engagement during the English for Media Literacy for Educators Campwide Meetup 3 conducted by the Department of Education, Calamba City. Given this 21st day of May 2021 through web webinar via Zoom and YouTube live stream for 1.5 hours, signed Susan D.L. Oribiana, Schools Division Superintendent, Superintendent. The same citation goes to Dr. Rebecca C. Sagot and to Dr. Romualdo A. Mabuan. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much for you know, Thank you so much for Thank you. Congratulations na natin, to us, Thank you so much for joining us again. So some final words, uh, Miss Pam, and and reminders, Miss uh, Wang. Thank you so much. Pam. And thank you very much for our sincere appreciation again to our three uh, distinguished resource speakers. Um, I know you will agree that today is a jam-packed talaga na session for today. Ayan, nagustuhan ko yung sinabi ni Ma'am Rebecca, ni Dr. Rebecca, na mooking is a combination of ano, the mind, our heart, our passion. So, ang dami natin matutunan ko for today. Ayan, so, Ma'am Weng, anong reminding natin for today? Ayan, no, thank you, thank you so much talaga. Thank you so much, Sir JP. I hope na everybody is uh, doing well and can finish all the tasks of uh, this uh, program. So see you next meetup. Ihabol ko lang ano po para sa next meetup natin. Uh, give me a minute. No? So module 3 na tayo. Uh, may palit lang tayo ng schedule instead of meeting on a Friday which is May 28. We're meeting on May 27 and it's on the evening time, 7 to 8.30. We will be joined by the virtual fellow from the U.S., from US talaga. So based siya doon sa US kaya minove natin kasi pag 4, 4 a.m. sa kanila. Medyo mahirap naman para sa ating speaker. And we will be joined by Professor Megan Marie Abrahamson. She'll discuss media literacy, civic engagement at ang kailang kailangan natin ngayong panahon assessment. So again, that's May 27th, 7 to 8.30 in the evening. We'll send you reminders, no? Plus yung ating attendance link and finally may picture niyata tayo, no? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Miss Pam. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to sign our attendance link. For it has been posted in our chat uh, box. Ayan. Again, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Paul, for being with us, Ma'am Wang. Also, ayan, our Ethical MC and to of course, our dear tayo. resource speakers, Paul. And to our SDS and um, Ma'am Susan, our ASDS, Sir JP, and to everyone who's here. Um, let's all have a great weekend po. Maraming salamat po. Mamweng, wanna say 